Number 27, last problem, yay. In this section anyway, <laughs> this module, I mean, <laughs> the graph of x squared plus x plus y squared plus y equals 199 halves in the xy plane. It is a circle. I read that wrong, but you know what I meant. What is the length of the circle's radius? Right, the formula for a circle looks like this, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So we have these two squares, these two perfect squares, and h and k are the coordinates of the center of the circle. So let's say an r is the radius. So if this was x minus two squared plus y plus three, squared equals 16. I would know this is a circle with a center of, it's always the opposite, because remember this is minus h, but we just want h, so you take the opposite. So negative two, you take the opposite, positive two, positive three, take the opposite, negative three. The center is at two, negative three. This is r squared, so I take the square root. The radius of this circle is four. All circles are gonna be in this format. So when you are given, something that looks like what they just gave us, which is x squared plus x plus y squared plus y equals 199 halves. That is a pathetic equal sign, 199 halves. And they want it to be the formula of a circle. They need you to get it into that x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. It needs to be in that format. So you need to turn each of these into perfect squares. So this is going to be completing the square. This is probably something you did back in Algebra 1. You probably did it for a week or two and didn't like it that much because not many people do. <laughs> and you thought, I passed the test. I never have to think about this again. Well, blah, ha, ha. Geometry comes back and laughs evilly in your face and says, yes, you do. You have to complete the square. Honestly, completing the square pops up so often. <laughs> And students are always surprised when it comes back. And they're like, what? It's back again. I know. I know. I'm sorry. It is what it is. And completing the square is just, it just keeps coming back to bite you. It does. Just going to interject here for a second. I'm guessing some of you are wondering or asking, <laughs> maybe even saying it out loud. Why isn't she just putting this in Desmos? That would be so much easier. Just type it in and boom, there's your graph. Here's the reason why I think for this particular problem this is prone to error. I think it's really easy to make a mistake using Desmos on this. If you can use it and use it accurately and get the right answer, that's great. Awesome. Go for it. But just I'm not recommending it to everyone because I think it's really easy because this particular circle, it's not centered at the origin. It is centered at, really doesn't like it when you try to do dots. It's centered at a negative 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5 right there. So everything is slightly off to the left, which means these two dots that it highlights right off when you open it up, the x-intercepts, they do not represent, if you connect them, they don't represent the diameter of the circle. And I think it's really easy for students to think that's the diameter, so I measure the distance between these two points, cut it in half, and I've got my radius, and you will not get the right answer. It'll be close, but this is not a multiple choice. It is a write it in, so you will get it wrong. Um, what you would have to do is realize that it's these two little points here that are slightly to the left of the x-axis, right to the left of these other two highlighted points that are the y-intercepts, and those two little points to the left would represent the end of a diameter, and you could find the radius from that. So again, for this particular problem, I am not recommending Desmos as my preferred method to do it. And plus, I just think it's a good idea to know the math that's going on behind it because we don't know what the exact type of problem you're going to get on the day when you take the SAT. And if you get a problem that's like this, where it's maybe not immediately clear through Desmos, like what, um, what the answer would be, it's always good to know the math that's going on behind the scenes so you know you can tackle any problem regardless. All right, back to the math. All right, to complete the square, 
I'm going to put some links in the videos down below that explain a little bit more about why this works, which I think is good to understand the why behind um, math principles and math rules. Just in this video, I'm just going to tell you the steps, but the explanation as to why the steps work, link down below. So first, if I am completing the square of this x squared plus x, I'm going to forget about the y squared plus y. I'm going to have to do this again with the y squared plus y. That's another thing. All right, to complete this square, I need to figure out what number can I put here that would turn this into a perfect square of x plus something squared. Okay, if I have a perfect square, it is in the formula a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So my first a, which is going to be the term here, becomes this. This is going to be 2 times a times b, and this is b squared. So in this case, anytime, first off, okay, I should say, anytime you're completing the square, you want to make sure there's nothing in front of the x. There's no 2, 3, negative 5, nothing. If there is, you need to divide all the terms that you were given by that number to get rid of it so that it is a 1 in front of the x. We already have a 1 in front of the x, so we're good. The next step is you are going to take whatever number is in front, excuse me, in front of the x squared. I should have said I was circling the right thing. I didn't say the right thing. I'm sorry. You're going to take whatever number is in front of the x. In this case, it is an understood or invisible one. You're going to divide it by 2. And then whatever you get, you're going to square it. And that is the number you're going to put right here. So this is a 1. We're going to divide that by 2, and that gives us 1 half. 1 half squared is 1 fourth. That's what goes there. And this number um, that you get at the point where you divide by 2, that's what goes here. So if this had been a, say this was a negative 1, this would be a negative 1 half, then it would be a negative 1 half we'd be putting right there. In this case, it's a positive one half. So there we go. And if you do FOIL and you multiply this out, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get x squared plus x plus one fourth. Okay. So again, those are your steps. You take, you make sure there's no number in front of the x squared. If there is, you divide both of these terms by that number. And I honestly, I'm trying to think of like with, um, and, and, be careful with this. I will say to be cautious with this. When I say divide the terms by that number, I need to be clear on this. This whole thing is one big ecosystem up here. So if I have to divide these x squared to get rid this x squared to get rid of something, I have to divide all of this by it. We don't have to do that in this one. I don't think they're going to give you something like that on the SAT. It's a little complex. I, d I don't think. I should say not come beyond the scope of the SAT. We'll put it that way. I think it's beyond the scope of what they're going to ask you. But just know that for your completing the square journey in the future. <laughs> so the process you're going to need to know for this is, again, you take that number that's there, invisible one in this case, you divide it by two. Whatever number you get for dividing by two goes here and then you square it to get the number there. Again, if it doesn't make sense why, please watch the video that's down below. All right, so I'm adding one fourth. All right, I'm gonna keep going. I have this other, other side, y squared plus y. Now this is, in this case, hey, it's identical to this one over here. I've got a single y squared, I have a single y, single x squared, single x. So you guessed it, it's going to be the same adding a one fourth to it because it's the same thing. There's an uh, invisible number one right there. I divide by two, it gives me one half. I square it to get my third, num uh, my third term, one fourth. Okay, now this is an equation with an equal sign. Equal signs, everything has to stay balanced. So I added a one fourth and a one fourth to turn these into perfect squares. So I need to do the same on the other side. It's getting quite long and I keep zooming out. There we go. So I need to do the same thing over here. I need to add a one fourth and a one fourth. All right, I'm going to rewrite these 
as their new perfect square selves. So here we have x plus 1 half squared. I just like things to be nice and neat here. And then y plus 1 half squared equals, now over here, 199 over 2 or 199 halves. 1 fourth plus 1 fourth. Now first off, okay, if I was just adding these two together, I would need to change this denominator. But because I have these two 1 fourths that are the same denominator, I'm going to add them first. 1 fourth plus 1 fourth is 2 fourths, which can be simplified to 1 half. Hey, now that's nice. Now it's 199 halves plus 1 half. So that 199 plus 1 is 200 halves. 200 divided by 2 is 100. Now this is starting to look like a proper equation, and I'm just going to skip writing that three times. I'm only going to write it <laughs> two times total. So it should have been there, but I just got lazy and, and frankly tired. It's the last question. I'm tired of writing all this stuff on a computer screen. All right, there is my equation of a circle. Woohoo, x plus 1 half squared in standard form plus y plus 1 half squared equals 100. So that 100 is, as we mentioned up here, the radius squared. So 100 is that radius squared. What is the square root of 100? That is 10. My radius is 10, and that was the question. What is the length of the circle's radius? 10 is my answer. Congratulations. You have made it to the end of this section. Hey guys, if this was helpful or useful in any way, please let YouTube know so I can keep helping you and others like you. Comment, like, share, subscribe, you know the drill. Also, if you're interested in practical or fun math-related items like this math clock or this hopefully humorous t-shirt, click on the links down below to check out my spread shop and Etsy stores. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.